Well, welcome to Christ and Culture. This is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to follow up on a review of the movie um, The Same God by Alicia Hawkins, the former professor at Wheaton College. And I'm going to go into depth more of the question of do Muslims worship the same God as Christians? And I'm going to play a clip by Dr. James White, who is a Christian apologist based in Arizona. He has a program, The Dividing Line, on the internet, and for many, many decades has addressed questions like this. He's studied uh, Islam, debated some of the leading scholars of Islam and has learned the Arabic language so that he can read the Quran in the original language. And so he addresses this question recently in a lecture. And so we're going to talk about what he says and try to help explain the answer to this question, do Christians and Muslims worship the same God? Because that was the whole controversy surrounding Larisha Hawkins' Uh, firing at Wheaton College, because she made the statement, bold statement, she wrote it out on Facebook, that after all, Christians and Muslims worship the same God, they're all uh, people of the book, and so she entered into that controversial topic, yet she failed to discuss or explain or justify her bold statement. So we're going to go into that question and actually answer it the way that uh, Wheaton College and Larisha Hawkins should have gone into it at the time of this controversy. I've said again and again and again, Wheaton College is an academic institution. They should be open to dialogue and discussion about these controversial issues instead of trying to sort of public relations lawyer it away. They want to, it's almost as if no comment, we don't want to talk about this. This will bring us bad publicity in the eyes of the world. Well, that's the failure of a discipleship process when you say, well, you can't answer that question. You can't ask that question even. No, we need to ask that question and we need to get some clarity on this question. That instead of just trying to hide from the question because it might cause disunity between Muslims and Christians, how about clarity? How about thinking it through? And so we're going to use this short clip from Dr. James White, Christian theologian and apologist, and we're going to try to bring some light to this uh, controversial issue instead of the heat that it generated back when the professor was, was fired from Wheaton College. Now, it is my sincere belief that she should have been let go. She should have been fired if she didn't uh, change or wasn't willing to modify her statement, and she wasn't willing to modify her statement, so she was uh, justly let go. But what is the answer to the question that she raised? Um, and Wheaton College doesn't seem to be in a hurry to answer that due to maybe disunity that it might bring, bad publicity that it might bring. Uh, but anyone with a curiosity or a healthy uh, desire to get to the truth will want to know what is the answer. Do Christians worship the same God as Muslims or vice versa? So we're going to tackle that because I felt that in my review of the movie, I didn't deal with this question. So I don't want to be accused of not dealing with questions. So let's get into it. We're going to look at this short clip and we're going to interject uh, some comments here and there as appropriate. So let's uh, jump in and roll the clip. The Quran says that Christians and Muslims uh, worship the same God. However... Okay, so right off the bat, it is a Muslim belief, because the Quran says it, that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. So this Larisha Hawkins was actually bringing forth a doctrine that the Muslims believe and not so much a doctrine that the Christians believe. So she was speaking from an Islamic standpoint more than she was speaking from a Christian standpoint. That's troubling. That's a problem. And that needed to be brought out at the time of this controversy. 
and it needed to be addressed. Uh, we needed to ask her, uh, Larisha Hawkins, why are you laying out the Muslim belief and not so much a Christian belief? Uh, I, you're a Christian. You teach at Wheaton College. You've had to sign the statement of faith. So why are you articulating a Muslim position on this rather than a historic Christian position on this? That would be a good question. The Quran also says that Christians go into uh, what's called excess. They have gone beyond the truth. And in fact, we are addressed in the text of the Quran. And the people of the book, Christians and Jews, are instructed not to say anything of Allah other than the truth. And the so the people of the book are the Christians and the Jews. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Louisa Hawkins said that because we worship the same God, uh, because we are people of the book, the Muslim and the Christians. So she was confusing, she was confusing Jews and Christians being people of the book with Islam uh, being a people of the book because of their Quran. Um, yes, Christians and Jews are people of the Old Testament book, and but the Muslims are people of the Quran because there are parts of the Old Testament where the Islamic faith actually edits out and changes the story. So how can you be a people of the Old Testament if you're changing the story of the Old Testament? It's a, it's a rewrite. Uh, there are many instances. For example, in, uh, Abraham, uh, instead of, uh, of his son uh, focusing on the son Isaac, in the Islamic version, uh, Abraham focuses on Ishmael. This is a rewrite. This is a total rewrite of the book. And so um, Larisha Hawkins seems to be confused about who she's talking about, people of the book. And so here again, we have a clarification. And this would have been helpful at the time of that controversy to actually bring this out and say, what are you talking about? Do you understand what you are saying, or were you mistaken? That to identify Jesus as God, to worship Jesus, to be a, a true Trinitarian, is not only to go beyond the level, but to enter into uh, a level of heresy that will lead you to hellfire. So, so that was, that's the Islamic uh, understanding of Christianity, is that we uh, go to excess. We go excessively. They actually believe that there is a part in the Quran that says uh, Christians should believe what they, their book tells them, and Muslims should believe that what their book tells them, and Jews should believe what their book tells them, but they believe that the people, Christians of the book, have gone to excess. So instead of, say, accepting Jesus as just a mere prophet, Christians have gone to excess and believe that he is uh, second person of the Holy Trinity, actually God in human flesh, which is something a Muslim believes is complete other damnable uh, falsehood. And so Christian worship of the Trinity is damnable according to the Islamic faith. On the one hand, while the Quran says, yes, Christians and Jews uh, and Muslims worship the same God, the serious Muslim will recognize that if you truly are a believing Christian, that your worship is inappropriate before God. And in the same way, a Christian answering the question, do we worship the same God, would say, no, we do not. And the reason we do not is because of the fact that God has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so after that revelation takes place, Jesus comes in flesh, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the church. After that point in time, we cannot go back to some type of Unitarian worship and say we're still worshiping God. Because okay, so this is a very, very important point, you know, because some people say, <clears throat> some people say, well, wait a minute. If you're saying that Islam and Christianity worship a different God, then what you're basically saying is that Jews and Christians worship the, a different God, because uh, Jews <clears throat> do not accept the revelation of Jesus Christ as God in human flesh or Savior, and Christians do embrace Jesus as the Savior and God in human flesh. So aren't you also... Uh, by association saying that Jews worship a different God from Christianity. And what Dr. James White just explained and clarified, and this would have been helpful again at the time of this big controversy to have even this simple kind of understanding brought out and talked about. The difference is that 
at the time of the Old Testament, there was revelation of one monotheistic God, monotheistic God, Unitarian described God. So we didn't have the revelation of God, the second person, the Son, and we didn't have a very clear understanding of God, the Spirit. I mean, it's there in sort of cryptic form in the Old Testament. For example, you have at the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it says the, the Spirit of God was brooding over the deep. So you have the Spirit present, and then you have hints, for example, in the book of Genesis, it talks about let us create man in our own image. No, there's a plural, let us create it. Who's, what's the plural? So there's a hint that God is more than just a Unitarian understanding of God, uh, as the Muslims understand him. So the Jews were justified in understanding God in more of a Unitarian understanding during the Old Testament. But when the second person of the Trinity, God in human flesh, Jesus Christ, visits the earth, and he starts making statements uh, to, to point to his deity, then that is a further revelation, that is a more detailed revelation, and then at that point, you are responsible for understanding God in a bigger, more deep way than the Old Testament described him. And so God is seen now, past Jesus' revelation, into the New Testament revelation, as a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, and now a person seeking God has to be responsible for believing in that trinity, and he he is responsible now in moving along with the revelation. So the Jews are still stuck in understanding God as he revealed himself in the Old Testament only in a more Unitarian understanding of God. They're still worshiping God but they're 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 worshiping uh, a God that is deeper and richer and fuller than they ever imagined from the Revelation of the Old Testament, and, but they're still worshiping the same God. Now with Islam, they had an understanding not only of the Old Testament, but they have also the understanding of the Trinity. Now it's questionable whether Muhammad actually understood the Trinity. But he had an understanding or an awareness of the Trinity as as a doctrine and an understanding of God. And they have rejected that. And they have said uh, Muhammad is the last and final uh, revelation of God. And so they have rejected Jesus Christ as the second person of the Holy Trinity. They rejected him as a savior. And they brought in this false prophet, Muhammad, as their voice of revelation and claim that he is the one you're supposed to listen to and that his utterances and his dreams and his visions recorded in the Quran are the revelations that we should listen to and believe with conviction. And that is false. That is false. So so you actually have, on the one hand, the Jews have an incomplete revelation and the Muslims have a false revelation revelation, actual plain falsehood about God. And so the the Islamic faith is a rejection and a repudiation and a replacement of the true faith, whereas the, the Jewish faith is more of an incomplete. They just have not caught up with the full revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Because in essence, we're saying that revelation that God made of himself is invalid or it's untrue. So the serious Christian and the serious Muslim will say, while we are both saying that historically our God spoke to Abraham, we're, we're, both, we're both making that connective claim. The reality is that in our current situation, what Christians believe about God and what Muslims believe about God are absolutely antithetical when it comes to what true worship actually is. So true worship. And, and again, this is something that could have been brought out at the time of this big controversy at Wheaton College, if the college had enough true, natural, and theological curiosity, um, here again, here is a community of professors, scholars, academics who you would assume 
have everything to gain from making this a teachable moment for not only the community there at Wheaton College, but also the, the wider national conversation that, the, that this opened up, and the world too, to teach on the nature of the true and living God that we Christians worship. Instead of spinning this PR maneuver, trying to do damage control, you might say, this is the kind of thing, what Wheaton College did was the kind of thing that you would hire a PR consultant in to a big corporation that made some kind of commercial gaffe. You know, we're seeing a lot of these today. We're seeing a lot of these companies uh, going woke, and some of them are going overboard, and then now they're being boycotted and losing their brand. And so you'd have a management consultant come in and say, here's how we have to minimize damage on this PR disaster that we're facing. And so this is what we have to do, and here's the plan to minimize the damage to our brand. That's what Wheaton College did. Instead of saying, hey, we're going to sit down and we're going to open up this question to the wider community, and we're going to discuss it as serious Christians, as scholars, as people who deal with ideas and concepts and debates and discussions and dialogues. We're going to open this up, and it will help people understand who God is in contrast to who God isn't in Islam. Well, they didn't do that. They didn't do that at all. And what we're hearing here from Dr. James White is that while on a, on a historical and conceptual level and an abstract level, on a sort of theoretical level, yes, we can all trace back to Abraham, but you have to realize that, that Abraham and his sons, they're not even described the same way by Islam. So again, I mentioned before that Abraham's uh, dealing more with Ishmael in the Arabic uh, world than he is in Isaac. And, and we all know from the Old Testament, Isaac was the favored son, not Ishmael. So there's distortion going on, even when you go back to the founder Abraham, uh, that Muslims like to point to, yes, we have Abraham in common historically, and yes, abstractly, you can say the God of Abraham was the God of all three uh, Abrahamic religions. Yes, you can go that far. But when it comes to actual worship, actual practice, uh, we are not addressing, by the time we get to Jesus Christ, we're not addressing the same God in our worship. Our worship is so different that it stretches credibility to say that we're war worshiping the same God uh, it, because of the distortions that Islam has brought into the whole conversation. And so on a political level, we can get away with saying, oh, we're one happy family, the Abrahamic faith, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but on Again, he's making reference to the fact that, for example, during 9-11, the terrorist attacks, Islamic extremist radicals attacked the trade centers in New York City. Uh, the PR mechanism, uh, George W. Bush, president, I voted for him twice, so I'm not anti-Bush, but he spun a PR message that said Muslims and Christians are together and Muslim, actually saying things like Muslim, uh, Islam is a peaceful religion and go, bending over backwards to try to, to not antagonize to separate cultures from going to war or whatever. And yeah, we all know that that was simply out of politeness, uh, public relations, politics. But as far as theologically, no, no, they're not. That's not true. Islam is not a religion of peace by any stretch of the imagination. And we don't worship the same God as Islam by any stretch of the imagination. On the truly religious level, where we are a serious Muslim or a serious Christian, we have to recognize, no, the worship that you give to a Unitarian God in denying that worship to Jesus Christ, denying uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit, from the Christian perspective, you're not truly worshiping the one true God. And the Muslim says, and you've gone too far in believing those things, and that's why we have to debate those issues and argue about those things. We can't just lay them off to the side, which is what our society wants us to do. They don't want us to have that kind of interaction going on. They want us to be all one big happy family that doesn't really... Yeah, that's what our society wants to do. And that's why Wheaton College followed 
the society on this. They didn't want to open up that can of worms. They didn't want to be known as the institution that you can see it in the headlines of the secular paper, hates Islam, anti-Islamic, Islamophobia. Uh, Wheaton College is anti-Islam and, and, and spinning all of these uh, hyper over-exaggerated claims. And that's what I think Wheaton College really feared. I think that's what the president and the administration, ultimately it came down to, look, we don't want to be known as an anti-Islamic institution because that's what the newspapers would spin it if we came right out and said, we're firing this professor because she is not speaking from a Christian perspective. She's speaking from an Islamic perspective. She's, she's speaking from a Quranic, Quran's expect, uh, perspective and not the biblical perspective. Now, ironically, uh, she got more support from Muslims and liberal leftists than she did evangelical Christians. And that's because that I think there's just an intuitive understanding that, hey, there's something wrong with what she said. And that's why she really needed to explain herself, but she didn't explain herself. And I think the reason why she might not have explained herself is because she didn't have anything to explain. There was not a very strong argument for her to somehow defend the proposition that we worship the same God. She might have gotten uh, what this could have, this could have been resolved if she had come out and said, I'm sorry, I made some statements that were very simplistic and incomplete. And what I meant to say was, we all share the a foundation in Abraham as Abrahamic religions. We all share a belief that there is one God. Okay, she could have clarified this without going into that very highly controversial topic of worship. Now, when it comes to worship, that's a whole different thing. Yes, uh, just like James White was talking about, on a, th- on a historical level, yes, you could say that Christians and Muslims believe in one God. And from a theological perspective, Uh, You ask a Christian, do you believe in the one God of Abraham? Yes, we do. You ask an Islamic scholar, do you believe in the one God of Abraham? Yes, we do. Okay, so you have a unity on a historical level, but then when you get into the nitty-gritties of theology and worship, you do not have a unity. You have a divergence, and so that has to be explained. And if she had said, I mistook I confused a historical reality of Abrahamic faith in God with the reality of actual worship in a church versus a worship in a Islamic Mecca uh, mosque. So I was mistaken there. She could have probably kept her job if she was willing to dialogue openly and actually modified and changed her views to to be more accurate, but she wasn't. She was stubborn. She was defiant. She's, no, I'm going to say what I say, and nobody has a right to. uh, It's not fair. They're treating me differently. It's because I'm black. It's because I'm a woman. It's all of these. She started bringing in all of these um, victim points to try to win her case rather than come like a regular scholar would do and explain dialogue, debate, uh, lecture, open this whole topic up to the world and help a lot more people. I believe anything at all. Uh, we can't do that. And so there is a difference uh, between the two. And to say uh, we worship the same God is to so simplify the claim as to make it a meaningless statement. We don't want to be making meaningless statements. Right. We don't want to be making meaningless statements. We don't want to be overly simplistic. We don't want to... Um, add to the confusion in the world because we don't want to rock the boat as far as a society of people who get along with each other. Yeah, we want to get along with each other. We want to be able to get along with Muslims. We want to be able to get along with Jews. We want to be able to get along with Buddhists and Hindus and all the other religions or even atheists. But we don't because we want to get along with the people, we don't want to 
uh, squeeze our our truth into a little box and then um, cripple our Christian faith for the sake of some political unity or social unity or warm and happy feelings with each other. No, we want to be truthful to what the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that God is one manifested in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we worship God as Trinity. Uh, Now, Islam actually goes out of its way in saying uh, God is one and he does not have a son. And it also says, the, the Quran says, do not say three. Do not say three. So Islam is trying to correct Christianity. They're claiming that our worship is wrong. They're claiming that we are in error. They're saying that if we were to come into the truth, we would not call Jesus Christ God in human flesh, second person of the Holy Trinity. We would not claim that God is Trinity, three persons, and uh, we would not believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. Uh, We would believe that he is only a prophet, And in fact, we would believe that Jesus is not even as great a prophet as Muhammad. And they claim that Muhammad is the the final word that God has spoken. And Christians' counterclaim is that is all false. Uh, Muhammad is not a prophet, and he speaks lies and false teachings. And so when Muhammad speaks about worship and how Christians should worship, We are not to listen to him because he is wrong. And when he is speaking about the nature of God and that God is not three in one, he is wrong. So there are big differences. And Laresha Hawkins should have understood that there are big differences. But she seems to have more of a political, social agenda. Her specialty, I guess, she got her degree in political science and she taught political science at Wheaton College. So her emphasis is on politics, and it seems like she has allowed her politics and her desire to get along with her, quote, Muslim sisters, which is another problematic term. You know, usually uh, when you're a part of a religion, you see your uh, Christian brothers and sisters. You refer to your Christian brothers and sisters. You do not refer to your Muslim brothers and sisters, unless you're trying to push some kind of a false unity agenda, like the Islamic, um, this this whole Abrahamic religion movement. So this was the big fear, I think, on the part of evangelicals when they heard this professor starting to talk this way, is like, oh no, she's moving into this ecumenical movement called Abrahamic Religious Movement. And there was a book put out, I can't remember the authors, but it was three women, uh, a Muslim, a Jew, and a Christian woman. And the purpose of their book was to really bring Muslims, Jews, and Christians together. I don't know if Laresha Hawkins had read that book. I don't know if she was influenced by that book, but it sounds like, it sounds like, it's, it's called the Coexist movement. You've probably seen the bumper stickers on cars where they have the crescent and the uh, Star of David and the cross all together, and it's called Coexist, and and it's an attempt to unify and blend all these religions together. Maybe she was influenced by that. I don't know. But hopefully uh, this has clarified that whole question of whether we worship the same God, and we will see you back next week on another episode. God bless.